Hello folks, uh, welcome to this final video on hypothesis testing for the proportion of a binomial distribution. Uh, and in this video we're going to focus on problems where we're asked for a with for critical regions um, that have probability closest possible to the significance level. Uh, let's go straight on to an example. So this is an example that we've seen before, but it's been adjusted slightly. So it says the local train is usually late 60% of the time. A new timetable is put in place and the company claims that it will be late less often. Out of the first 10 services of the new timetable, the train was late twice. So all of that we saw in a previous video. But it then says, test the company's claim with a critical region as close as possible to the 5% level. So uh, you might remember in previous videos that the uh, actual significance level, the probability of falling in the critical region, always had to be less than the significance level. But in this question, we're actually asked, rather than it being less than, it just has to be as close, close as possible. So it could be that it is actually just above 5%. So how would we go about this question? Well, th the first three steps are exactly the same as we did previously. We write down our variable, we write down our hypotheses, and we write down our um, assumption uh, of, for the distribution of our random variable. Remember that that's assuming that the null hypothesis is true. Uh, we then work out the probabilities and we can do this using our calculator uh, and we want either side of 5%. So you should find that less than or equal to 2 is 0 0.0112, just less than 5%. Less than or equal to 3 is 0 0.0547, just over 5%. In the previous videos, we would always have ch chosen the one that is below the significance level. So this one is below the significance level, so our critical region would have been x is less than or equal to 2. However, in this question, we're asked for it to be as close as possible to the 5% significance level, so not necessarily below. And you can see that 0 0.0547 is much closer to 0 0.05 than the 0 0.0112. This probability is much closer. So in this example, we would actually take less than or equal to 3 to be our critical region. Other than that, the question is carried out in exactly the same way. So our next step would be to see whether our test statistic says the train was late twice. So to see whether two is in a critical region, well, two is clearly less than or equal to three. So it is in the critical region. We then make our decision on the null hypothesis. We can say, therefore, there is evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And finally, put that in the context of the question, we can say there is evidence that the train is now late less often. And that's it. So you can see they're not very different to previous questions. Uh, look through the steps quickly. So variable, hypotheses, assumption, all the same. The critical region, we work out the properties in the same way, but the critical region that we choose might be slightly different. We just look for the one that is closest to our significance level. Then, exactly the same as before, compare our test statistic to see whether it's in the critical region and make our decision on the null hypothesis. And then we put our uh, conclusion in the context of the question. Let's look at one more example. So this one says a company claims that a quarter of the bolts sent to them are faulty. To test this claim, the number of faulty bolts in a random sample of 50 is recorded. Uh, notice that we're not told here whether to uh, test for whether it's increased, whether the proportion that a faulty is increased or decreased. We're just seeing whether it's still a quarter. So this is going to be an example of a two-tailed test. And in fact, in part A, they, they tell us that anyway. It says using a 5% significance level, find the critical region for a two-tailed test of the hypothesis that the probability of a bolt being faulty is a quarter. The probability of rejection in either tail should be as close as possible to 0 0.025. So it's this last sentence here uh, in part A that tells us it's one of these type of problems. We want the probability of uh, 
each tail to be as close as possible uh, to 0 0.025. <clears throat> so for this one, let's set up our hypothesis for a start. It's slightly strange here because all we're doing is testing to see whether it's a quarter. So the alternative is it's not a quarter. So we can say the null hypothesis, the p equals a quarter. The alternative is that p is not equal to a quarter. Uh, we can write down the distribution of our random variable, assuming that this is true. So binomially distributed, could be faulty or not. Uh, we're testing faulty, uh, a sample of 50, sorry, bolts, and assume that the null hypothesis is true. Uh, the probability of it being faulty is a quarter. We then look at our lower tail, and we want the probability that x being less than or equal to some number to be either side of 0 0.025. So less than or equal to 6 is just below 0 0.025, less than or equal to 7 is just above 0 0.025. But the important thing for this question is which one of them is closer to 0 0.025. And hopefully you're happy that this one is closer to 0 0.025, which would tell us that this is our lower critical region. So we can say the critical region is x is less than or equal to 6. Next bit, uh, we want our upper critical value or critical region. So we look at some less than or equal to some numbers and we would want one of them to be just below 0.975 and the other one to be just above 0.975. So we should end up with 18 and 19 being either side. We work out the opposite bits from that, so less than or equal to 18 is 0.9713, means greater than or equal to 19 is 0 0.0287, and similarly for the bottom one, and these will end up being either side of the 0 0.025. In the previous examples, we'd all have ways of taking the one that's below, but in this question, we're asked for it to be as close as possible to 0 0.025. This one is closer to 0 0.025 than the 0 0.019, sorry, 139. Uh, so our critical region for the upper part would be this one, x is greater than or equal to 19. So we've worked out our critical regions uh, uh, where, the, where either to each tail is as close as possible to 0 0.025. Part B says find the actual significance level of this test. Remember, the actual significance level is the probability of x lying in the critical region. So we need the probability that x is less than or equal to 6, or, so add, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 19. So less than or equal to 6 is 0 0.0194, greater than or equal to 19, 0.0287. So we add those together and our actual significance level is going to be 0 0.0481, all right? which is pretty close to 0 0.05 to our 5% significance level. Finally, part C, it says in the sample of 50, the actual number of faulty bolts was 8. Comment on the company's claim in the light of this value. Justify your answer. So really all that's saying is, uh, is the company telling the truth? Uh, they claim that a quarter of the bolts sent to them are faulty. All right. So do we uh, have we got evidence to reject our null hypothesis? Well, we can see that 8 is definitely not less than or equal to 6. 8 is not greater than or equal to 19, so 8 is not in the critical region. There is no evidence to reject H0. There is no evidence to reject the fact that the probability that a bolt is faulty is a quarter. And therefore, there is no evidence to refute the company's claim that quarter are faulty. And that's it for this last video on hypothesis testing. So hopefully that's helped you just with this slight difference in question uh, uh, for some problems. OK, thanks very much.